Chuck again, back for another video installment. Um, I am making this video to let everyone and anyone interested know about what the Lord's mark that he put on Cain was. I have, you know, a few people that have commented on my comment board, and they keep talking about how uh, Cain's mark was that he made Cain black, and that you know, that this is, you know, now people are taking, you know, some of my teachings. It's amazing that people are even reading the beginning of the Bible now. But now all of a sudden, I got people saying that Cain's mark was that he was black. And now, you know, I got people leaving the messages saying, oh, die a white Edomite devil and all this stuff. But, you know, Cain's mark wasn't that he was black. These are the kind of theories that you get from people that you know haven't read the whole Bible all the way through yet and have only read a little ways into it and then just take on their own little meaning about it. But uh, it's a real simple question as to what Cain's mark was and what the mark that the Lord put on Cain. And I'm saying that Jesus Christ is Satan, the morning star, because the two stories of creation in Genesis are not about the same creation. God created people on the sixth day and the Lord God, Satan, the Lord of this world, created Adam and Eve on the seventh day and was blaspheming by doing so. And the Lord is Satan come to earth in physical form in the form of an alien or aliens from another planet. They often speak in plural form, like at the Tower of Babel where the Lord says, let us scatter them abroad. So, but I'm saying that they, the Christian church is lying to you from page one. And they've got you reading the Bible backwards and they've got you reading the New Testament first before you understand the Old Testament, so you'll have no frame of reference for understanding what's going on. So, but anyway, back to this question of who, what was the mark that the Lord put on Cain? Well, first and foremost, let me read from the first story of the Lord putting a mark on Cain, and then ask yourself why it would be that the Lord would need to put a mark on Cain when he's already been banished from his parents. If this is, uh, you know, this second telling of the same creation and Adam and Eve were first well you got Adam and Eve Cain Abel Cain killed Abel now he's been banished from his parents to the land of Nod and now somehow he magically has a wife too hmm, who was Cain's wife was it one of God's people from the sixth day Blah. it's real simple but why is it that the Lord would even need to put a mark on Cain to protect him from anybody out there if his own, the only other people out there are his parents who's he, who he's been banished from then there would be no need to humor Cain and put a mark on him. But here's the story of it. And uh, so here it is. It's uh, Genesis 4:15. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain lay with his wife and she became pregnant. I just threw that in for shits and giggles to show you all that these are two stories about the same creation and that Cain's wife is one of God's people from the sixth day. But why would the Lord need to put a mark on Cain to protect him in the first place? That's the first question you should ask yourself. And like I said, this is showing right away that this is two creations. But I'm going to keep going and show you that, you know, right here in the next book, which is Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 13 to be specific, but especially 13... 8 through 9 and 14 through 16 that talks about another mark that the Lord puts on people and let's see maybe if you can put the pieces together and figure out who or what this mark that the Lord puts on Cain is because it's pretty simple if you actually pay attention from beginning to end so this is chapter 13 talking about the Passover and the consecration of the firstborns where the Lord wants all of the firstborn so here this is 13 8 on that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord is to be on your lips. And the Lord brought, brought you out of Egypt with his mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at appointed time year after year. Then it also says in 13, 15, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed every firstborn in Egypt, both man and animal. This is why I sacrificed the Lord the, to the Lord the first 
male offspring of every woman redeem each of my firstborn sons. And it will be like a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Starting to sound familiar? I hope so, because it should be pretty obvious by now. But I'm going to go ahead to Revelation, skip ahead from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And, you know, like I said, I just want to show this other story to show you that there's a lineage right from the beginning that's showing you what this mark is about. If you have any clue, you should have been able to figure it out by now. But this is Revelation 13, 16. I'm sure you've all heard it before, but I'll say it again. He also forced everyone, small, great, rich, or poor, free, and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of that name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it's a man's number. His number is 666. And of course, in chapter 14, it goes on, Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, capital L, Jesus the Lamb, standing on Mount Sion. And with them 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. It's the mark of the beast. You starting to get it now? It's real simple who Cain's mark was, or what Cain's mark was, that the Lord put on him. It's the mark of the beast. I'm just going to read the last. This is Revelations chapter 22. It ties all of my concepts together. I've been consistent from day one. When I first made my videos, I made my Jesus of Satan videos and my videos tying Freemasonry to Kabbalah and also tying that to the Bible. And I also made videos talking about the Kabbalah tree of life and the apocalypse and the new world order and how they're the same. And that the microchip that they're trying to get us to take is the mark of the beast. Well, this last chapter also, I wanted to add that uh, my other video about the new earth and the new, or new world order, well, they're the one and the same. The new world order comes from your Bible. It's the new earth that will be ruled by the new Jerusalem starting in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah, and this is the last chapter of Revelation. So I'm going to start reading, and this ties almost every concept that I've put out in my videos together. I've been consistent from day one. So check out all of my videos in their totality because they're right in line, and this ties them all together. This is chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not, there will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. And the angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the thing that must take, soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keep the words of this prophecy of this book, says Jesus. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard them and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown before me. But he said to me, Don't do it. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and the prophets and all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he told me, do not seal the words of this prophecy, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue doing wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. Thy re my reward is with me. And I will give to you every one according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, and they may have the right to the tree of life. These are Jesus' words right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city, outside of the dogs who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, and murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves the practices and falsehoods. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star, Satan the morning star. Also, I talked before about the book of Isaiah and talked about how the Lord is an alien and talked about the eagle, the four-headed alien that has eagle's head. Well, look at my shirt. Do you think they're trying to tell you something? Eagle, star, 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 six, three, six, six, six. Do you think they're trying to tell you something? It's all right there, book of Ezekiel. The Lord is an alien. 